So we're here in Mazda City in the driverless cars with Hint Habaya. Hint, tell us who you are, your company. The company I started is Instabeat. It's a heads-up display for swimmers to track their workouts and to track their progress over time. How old were you when you started? I was 22 when I started. I was swimming at university when I had the idea for the project and then took part in a competition that helped me develop the first prototype. How tough was it to start at such a, such a young age? It was very difficult. It was very difficult to be taken seriously. It was very difficult to get people working for me and actually executing on my vision. So I've had a few rude encounters, but you know, you get over them quickly and you develop a thick skin. So you know, one big inflection was to actually have the first prototype. Uh, when I had it, I felt so empowered and I felt that, you know, I can do this. I was very lucky to be at the Stars of Science competition. So they had experts for us that helped us design the whole product and we used the facilities in Qatar in order to prototype. So they had a huge, big, bulky PCB machine that took days to manufacture. Now you can do it in minutes. Yeah. And we had to send the 3D to Amsterdam actually to get it printed and they shipped it back to Doha and it cost like $4,000 to do it. So I was very lucky to be supported by Qatar Foundation and Stars of Science. Uh, otherwise, it, it would not have been possible. So if you were to build the same thing today, what, how would you do, what would you do differently and what would you use differently? This first prototype was a big infection point because I felt really empowered. And um, the second infection point was, I think, getting to the final shape of the prototype. So we went through maybe 10 different versions in order to get to the final form factor and the final features that were going to be in the minimum viable product. But it did take two full years to develop that and right. 10 iterations. And so transitioning from that into manufacturing, that was a huge inflection point. Manufacturing is a completely different ball game. You know, they take your design, they throw it in the garbage, they just see what it looks like and they redesign it from scratch. So timing, can you tell me more about timing? Timing is very important. If a startup launches before it's time, it, it yeah. crashes after it's time, it's too late. What about your timing? Was it the right one? Was it a bit earlier, a bit later? I think. The, the, I think we were just in time for the wearable uh, technology movement and the quantified self movement. When we started in 2010, that was the first year that they organized the quantified self conference. So when I went there, actually, I was one of the first people to attend that conference and now I'm really a core part of the organization. Uh, it was also, um, wearable technology was not spread out. Fitbit had only launched one product right. yet and it was the only wearable on yeah. the market. So really what we tried to do is ride that movement. You know, At first we were only measuring heart rate and it was really targeted at professionals. But then with the rise of Fitbit and the likes, I realized that no, everyday people want to be able to track stuff and everyday people want to access their information yeah. on the digital side. And that's how we evolved our product and we really rode that wave. So one unique insight you found and what's next? A uh, unique insight is that, especially when it comes to manufacturing, it's a very uh, expertise heavy industry and uh, my advice and my learning is do not do it unless you have people that are very expert in that field. I think this is the biggest mistake and uh, what I learned the, the most. Uh, what's next is uh, pushing the analytics and the data side of this product and developing more products. You have now arrived Thank you very much. Thank you.